Hey guys, Jenny here. Today I'm going to modify my Sonoff RF bridge to run ESP Home firmware and have it integrated into Home Assistant. I've been running Tasmotor on my RF bridge until now, and if you haven't already tried Tasmotor and want to, or if you're going to flash ESP Home directly from this, after this video, the flashing process is already nicely covered in this video by Dr. Z's, so you might want to check that out. So thanks, Doc. If you want to download the YAML I'm going to use for ESP Home, you can get that from my GitHub, so the links should be down below. Now, ESP Home cannot communicate with the microcontroller that's built into the Sonoff RF bridge. So the first thing we're going to have to do is modify the hardware in order to bypass the microcontroller. GitHub user WildWiz has already worked out this modification and he's documented it on the ESPerno wiki. So it would be worth checking that page for reference, especially if you have a different version of the Sonoff RF bridge than I have. So thanks, Wild Wiz. Okay, let's get on with it. Okay, we need to start by turning over the Sonoff RF bridge, removing the four rubber covers in the corners to expose the screws underneath, and we're going to take the screws out so that we can get to the circuit board. Okay, we can now open the case and remove the circuit board. Next we need to prise up this LED that is covering the components where we need to solder, but first we want to just check the version number. We can see mine says R2V1, that's release 2 version 1. If you've got a different version, make sure you follow the correct guide. So prise up the LED and then we're ready to start soldering. Now we want to connect a wire or a resistor to pin 10 on the RF chip. I've gone ahead and done this one off screen because I wasn't able to solder it successfully so that you could see it. But there we are. We want to next connect the other end of this wire to GPIO 4. And that is on this set of header pins here. On the right hand side there's a label here but the IO4 and IO5 are actually back to front. It's an error in the manufacturing. So we need to solder to this pin, which is GPIO4. Next we want to solder a wire from R13 here over to GPIO5. That's it for the soldering. We now need to cut this trace here to disconnect the microcontroller from the transmit signal line. Okay, so now we need to cut the traces here and here to disconnect GPIO 4 and 5 from the USB port. So we're just going to cut those traces as before. There we are. You can see they're now cut. Here and here, I've managed to keep all the ground planes intact. 
and that now is the end of the hardware modifications that we need to make so we can go ahead and reassemble the Sonoff RF bridge back into its case. Over to the PC now and we're going to come up with the Sonoff RF bridge sketch in ESP Home. We set up the device at the top and then the Wi-Fi. You can see I'm using manual IP if you want to use DHCP that's fine as well. I've then got logger, API and over the air updates. I'm also running the web server. Then I've got some standard sensors I like to include, the Wi-Fi signal, the uptime and the status. Then I'm setting up the RF receiver on pin 4 and you can see I've set tolerance to 50. That's because some of my devices aren't picked up if I've got that set lower. Next we've got the transmitter set up on pin 5. And last of all, I've got the status LED, that's the Wi-Fi LED, the blue one on the Sonoff RF bridge, uh, showing the status. If you want that to be on when the device is running, change inverted to no. Okay, we'll save that and move on. Now we want to compile that into a binary we can flash to our device. Okay, with that done, we need to go down the bottom right there and select download binary. That's going to save the file for us so that we can flash it. Okay, now because we've got the web server running in our sketch, we've got this little symbol. And that will take us straight to the web page. In our case, it's currently the TAS motor interface because that's what's running on our bridge. In the console, we can see everything's running just fine. Now we're going to go back to the main menu and this time we choose firmware upgrade. We're going to choose the file that we've just made. So we'll select that and then tell it to start upgrade. That's going to flash that firmware onto our Sonoff RF bridge and when it's done we should be running ESP Home. And there we are, upload successful. Now it says the device will restart in a few seconds, when it does this web page should also refresh itself and we should get the ESP Home Web Server web page. And there it comes. Now we don't need to go any further with this because we want to go over now to the logs so that we can sort out setting up our devices. Okay, back in ESP Home we can see that the RF bridge is online. We want to press show logs. That's going to connect to our device and show the logs. Now I've got a motion sensor which I'm going to activate now and it should pop up. There it is in the logs. Now we can see that it's running on protocol 1 and that there's the code regularly appearing there. So we're going to copy one of those instances so that we can use that in the code. We're going to edit our sketch and this time we're going to add in a binary sensor for that motion detector. So we're going to set it up on platform remote receiver. We're then going to give it a name. In my case this is my downstairs motion sensor so I'm going to call it downstairs motion and this is the name it will appear as in Home Assistant. We're then going to tell it what device class it is again for Home Assistant so in this case it's motion and then we're going to set up how it works from the remote receiver. We're going to tell it it's a, a raw RC switch and the code that it's using is that one that we've just copied from the logs. But we're going to put that in single quotes. Then we're going to tell it the protocol that the code appeared on as well. Last of all we're going to put a filter on it so that it turns itself off after, in my case, five seconds. Then we're going to save that, check it with the validate, everything looks good, so we can go ahead 
and upload that back to the board again. Everything's gone well there now. We're just waiting for it to reconnect back to the Sonoff RF bridge. And there we go. Okay, now, if we activate the motion sensor, we can see that now we simply get sending state off and sending state on. As it's on now, and now it's gone off again. There we are. So that's working well. The next thing we want to do now is we want to set this up in Home Assistant. Okay, so we're going to go down to Configuration in Home Assistant and then to Integrations. Now yours may have been discovered but I'm not running Discovery at the moment so I need to set this up manually. So I'm going to choose a new ESP Home Integration and type the IP address of the device. I don't want to put it in an area at the moment, but you can see it's found the device. So I'm going to press finish and that should set that up. And there it is. And we can see we've got the downstairs motion, the status, the uptime and the Wi-Fi signal all pulled into Home Assistant. Fantastic. OK, so that's a simple single code sensor set up now in ESP Home. But what happens if we have something like a door sensor that sends a code for both on and off? Well, we'll take a look at that next. Back in ESP Home again now, we're going to bring up the logs for the Sonoff RF bridge again. This time, I'm going to close my door sensor and then open it again. This should give me both a closed and an open code in the logs. There's the closed, and there's the opened. We can see occasionally we get an incomplete code, but that doesn't matter. We'll just make sure we select the complete code. Back in the sketch now, you can see I've added two new binary sensors. One called door window open, because this is the window in my door, and one called door window closed. I've got the code from each of them, as the RC switch code and I'm using protocol 2 because protocol 2 appeared more often than protocol 1 in the logs. You'll see I've also got these set as internal true. That means that these binary sensors will not be exposed to home assistant. They're only available within the ESP home device itself. Okay we're going to validate and recompile the sketch. Okay, now when we bring the sensor together, we can see that the closed say is sent multiple times. And when we bring it apart, we can see that the open state is sent multiple times. So we don't need multiple entries of that. So we're going to put a filter on each of these binary sensors to delay that on and off trigger as the code is sent multiple times. So we're just going to do a delayed off filter of 100 milliseconds and that should cover us for that. We're going to copy that and paste it in to the closed code as well. What we want now is to join those two open and closed sensors together into a new sensor. So we've got a platform template sensor and we've named it the door window and we've told it that its device class is window. Now we're going to use a lambda which allows us to specify some code to control this binary sensor. So first we're saying if the door window open state is true, we can't see that, we don't need to include that. And that door window open ID is the one we've used up here. If it is, then we know the door window is open, so we're returning true. Otherwise, else if the window is closed, the sensor state from here, then we're returning false. 
So that gives us open and closed. Now we just need one more else statement that returns the last known value of this template sensor which will apply at any time when neither of those codes is being received. OK, I'm going to duplicate all of these binary sensors to suit each one of my devices and then I'm going to compile it and upload it back to this on-off RF bridge and then we're going to go over to Home Assistant and take a look. Here we are. You can see the motion detection, detecting motion. And clear again. And now the front window open and closed. The front door open and closed. The back door open and closed. The door window open and closed. I think that's just about covered it. You'll notice that I'm not transmitting anything from my RF bridge. That's because I don't actually have any devices that I need to send RF codes to. But if you do, go and check out this page on the ESP Home documentation and that should get you through setting up your devices in ESP Home. For me, I found that the RF bridge now picks up the codes a lot faster than before and it's been working really well. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please hit the like and subscribe buttons below. I'll be making more videos when I can find time around my other commitments, so please do check back. Okay guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you again.